Hi, uh, welcome to this webinar on Lean and Agile, uh, empower your teams and increase your collaboration through digital technologies. And I think the, the starting point obviously needs to be uh, the actual Lean and Agile itself. And really when we're talking about that, the starting point I probably uh, would be best talking about the essence of it. And in many respects we can call it non-linear management. And non-linear management, which Lean and Agile are concepts part of that mega trend. We call it a mega trend because it's actually been around for 30 years. And we sometimes forget that. We sometimes feel this whole Lean, Agile, different approach to running things is something completely new. When it's not. And the idea behind it is techniques and strategies that allow order to emerge by giving an organization a space to rapidly self-organize evolve and adapt. Really sort of encompassing those essence, being a little bit more flexible than perhaps they have in the past. And that's really challenged the classic scientific management approach. And as a result of that, we talk about the principles of efficiency, the, the idea of sort of maintaining customer value with less work, which we'll touch on as we go through. Right from self-organized teams down to continuous improvement. And a word that really springs out from this area is transparency, challenging once again some of the control that we've perhaps been used to. Over the recent months, I've been to a number of events by the APM, and people are now constantly recognizing how, okay, we have that, but how does it coexist with the linear management view that we have, where there does need to be some sort of control? And I'd like to touch on that again during the course of this next hour. But in a nutshell, lean is really about minimizing, minim, minimizing, I should say, waste and improving overall customer value. It is about doing customer value, but really concentrating on those things that address that. Making sure that we don't spend time on things that aren't really driving us to that goal. So the waste could be idle time, inventory, overproduction, overprocessing, defects. There are things that have been put in the process that we can get rid of, we are really Lean, making the process that much leaner than perhaps it historically has been. And Agile really comes from a much more software, because Lean really from a manufacturing background, and the, the, the Agile from a software development background. And, the, and it's really sort of resulted in an Agile manifesto, primarily for that software development world, where we talk about there was a consortium of people back in 2001 that started to put down what they believe are the essential elements to address an agile type project. And the value has really been individuals' interactions rather than processes and tools. A working software solution rather than comprehensive documentation. So historically we might spend a lot of time putting a detailed set of requirements down, a functional spec, but let's actually now look to produce a software solution a lot much quicker. For those of you from a software background, that probably is something you're familiar with, rapid uh, development, prototype development. But also customer collaboration rather than contract negotiations, working with each other and responding to change. Accepting change with a smile, which for those of us who've been on projects, it's not always easy to do that if we really believe we're close to the end of something. But it doesn't mean those other values in terms of some form of process control, comprehensive documentation, down to following a plan don't have a role. It's just the focus is on those elements. And the manifesto then sort of, sort of maps out a little bit more. I don't necessarily propose to go through each of these. Uh, please be aware you will receive the slides uh, via the APM or the publisher. You'll have an opportunity to go through them. But we're talking about customer satisfa satisfaction by rapid continuous development, delivery. Making sure they're part of it frequent delivery, working with each other. And it says here, even late chain, changes in requirements are welcome. From a personal point of view, having a long time, not even a software development, producing a report, we must have all done that report, a very detailed report, but not necessarily getting the interaction from people along the way. So then when delivering the report, the report didn't address what that individual needed, and there was an awful lot of rework needed at the end. So even those late changes, if we can get part of it, then we should be in a position to be agile enough to adopt them. 
but we're really moving our way through down to self-organizing teams. A little less control than perhaps we've had in the past, but getting everyone to be part of it. But not forgetting that face-to-face -face conversations is the best form of communication. So what is Agile? In a nice picture representation, it is moving away from the way most of us think where we go on a project and there is one route to success and if you get that you if you don't take that path you fail and the principle behind the agile is actually embracing failure I was at a talk a few months ago where somebody said that is the essence of what what we're talking about having the, the confidence to face failure but failure early and adapting and adopting and therefore getting to success that much quicker and being confident when you get there. And again, when we talk about from a Gantt perspective, it's about what I would say divide and conquer. And those of you, there's a couple of references to history during the course of this presentation, but the first one is Julius Caesar. Caesar divided his plan to conquer the world. He managed it so well because he actually took little pieces. He didn't try and do it in one go. And this is really, again, the essence of what we're talking about an agile approach. There'll be certain projects, certain, certain initiatives that really lend themselves to breaking the bigger pieces into smaller parts and let's make sure we get those successful and do it quickly. But do it in such a way that the customer who we're delivering to is on board rather than waiting to the test phase to find out that yes, the thing worked, but this isn't what I wanted. What I wanted was something else that if you'd listened to me during the course of the X months, we would have got there. It sort of moves that came from a software development, but it isn't. It isn't just for software development, but the, the, the main area it's come out from is that space where we talk about sprints, a chunk of time, a sort of an area where a team get together. We're talking about getting something done in a finite piece of time, and therefore the end person we're delivering to can see the results. We talk about velocity graphs, burnout rates, but the idea is getting everybody on board taking a certain amount of work that could be delivered over a sprint of say 30 days. So we might take a big piece of work on and a small, some, some uh, number of smaller pieces as well. Using such estimation techniques as mountain goat, but the essence is we agree as a team. And we take on a piece of work across a period and deliver it with a result a demonstrable piece of work, which is why historically it comes from a development background. But there's an opportunity for us to consider other types of projects or initiatives where we can get something out quicker and get people reacting to it. And that will allow us to be that much more agile. And what we're really talking about is, are you a resource efficient or a flow efficient type of organization? So are you really looking at the resources and just going through the phases to get the results? Or are we looking to get results that much quicker and getting people on board that much quicker that therefore if we have to change at unit B, we can adopt it that much easier if we're getting the customer on board in those discussions than if we had waited till the end. I've mentioned about lean, which comes from a manufacturing background, which it does. The, the idea of having a production line which is reducing waste and therefore producing the results with higher value for the customer and lower costs for us as an organization. We talk about agile, which yes, it comes from a development background, hence the sprint in terms of producing software products. But each of them are now finding their way into other industries. And the balance of how they support with a traditional methodology is something we're all trying to address and understand, and I know, having spent a lot of time at things such as the Association Project Management events, and more recently, ITMA, it is something that we realize we have to get our heads around. I mentioned your organizations in terms of, do you believe you're, you are agile? So this is probably a very similar. I'll be interested here uh, in a few moments, because an agile organization from data from the PMI's pulse of the profession has found that an agile organization is, is likely to achieve 69% of the strategic objectives of that organization 
rather than 45%. That much more likely. But we talk about lean and agile and their, where they've come from. Lean from a manufacturing background and agile from a software background. So let's look to see how we can adopt those. What a key part and a key part of what I want to talk about today is to actually utilize such approaches, collaboration has a big role to play. And just like the non-linear management approach where it's been around over 30 years, well, collaboration is nothing new. Or is it? Well, this book here by John Searle really focuses on the, the speech act theory, the theory about describes how people cooperate using language. And obviously, we have, over generations, been doing that. And any time the key part of a project is really get individuals to know what's happening, what individual actions are out there, and what commitments people make to each other. So collaboration has always been part of everything that we've, we've done to this point in time. But the challenge for us is the trends that are out there, meaning that the, the ability to speak to each other gets that much harder. So we talk about globalization. We talk about the fact that we're now not necessarily physically smaller, but from a communication point of view, we're now in a much smaller space, 24-7, speed of decision making that much quicker. We have mobile work workforces where there's data suggest that up from IDC that in 2015, 30 odd percent of the employment world will be mobile, will be remote workers, like 1.3 billion. We have, he, even here in the UK, in uh, 30th of June this year, the Flexible Working Act, the opportunity for each and every one of us to request more convenient working hours, flexible working hours. And also the consumerization of IT. A number of us will have our own personal devices, or we're using anyway devices such as iPhones or Androids, which are allowing us to communicate in different ways all the time. So this world is sort of giving us rise to the collaboration, the challenges to do so, and also doing so in a much more secure way with the, also the adoption of the cloud. And we talk about business trends and challenges. We talk about the efficiency world, word I should say, being perhaps overused. Higher productivity demand, increased competition, hence the need to be a lot much leaner. The ability, when we talk about lean, is the ability to cut the demand, get the waste out of our process, and increased competition means we probably have to be agile. If we're not agile in, in a number of ways, then other organizations may be. So there is a role to play in some of the initiatives, even if it's not in all the projects, as a mentality of an organization. But we find that the ecosystems that we're, we're working in have changed, much more of a role of partners, much more of a role of stakeholders, and resulting in multiple teams, internally and externally. So the ability to be in that one fixed office with a final cabinet in the corner and talk to each other is being challenged all the time. But if we're really going to adopt a much more lean and agile approach to the right type of projects, then we want to move towards beautiful project collaboration. It could be a football team, it could be anything, the coordination of the people within the project. And in an agile world, not necessarily dictating what everybody does, but creating an environment, remembering the uh, manifesto, of a much more self-organizing team and working effectively with each other. But that's not easy. But that's where the Kanban board is the next big collaboration trend. How come? So how is it going to facilitate? So we look at the world where there will be certain initiatives for us to have from a lean and agile world. There will be the need to be cut some waste out, be a little bit more agile. But we've suddenly got the world where the people involved in such projects might be spread all over the place. How does the Kanban board help us to do that? Well, really, it's focused on one key area, I would say, is the danger of multitasking. You know, many, many people take pride in, in how we multitask. There's always a view that women multitask better than men. You know, but research suggests, actually, the whole concept of multitasking can be challenged because it really does increase the chances of making mistakes, missing important information, spinning too many plates, which we all do. 
uh, starting so many things too quickly, not necessarily finishing what we've already started that needs to be finished. It's less likely to retain information in the memory, which therefore can sort of hinder problem solving and creativity. It's just basically impossible neurologically to do such an approach. And it actually creates cognitive impairment. So when you consider such areas where multitasking needs to be ironed out and, and, and an ability for us to, to adopt this world, and there's more you can read on this in terms of organize your mind or organize your life, visit the, the link that we have there. There's so much data that we all know on looking into the head, what motivates people, what's part of that. But there's no doubt in the world where we're striving to be competitive, people sometimes are in danger of taking too much on not necessarily always a person, but an organization. Well, what is a Kanban board? It's fundamentally about providing visual signs, a card, Kanban is Japanese, Kan visual ban card, to allow you to start helping to identify multitasking uh, issues that might be in your organization. It's a pool system. So we're talking about remembering that manifesto that was put together many years ago about continuous improvement, but we need to visualize the work and team's progress. Many of us on this call, if not all of us, will be very comfortable with the role of a Gantt chart, dating back from uh, 1910 or something of that era from Henry Gantt, where it gives us a strong visual indication of milestones. Well, the Kanban board now in the world that we're in is really focused on giving us visual signs around collaboration and workloads, enabling a customer to, to really move towards continuous delivery, focusing on the parts it's clearly aren't adding the value if we're thinking in a lean way and an agile way, allowing us to adapt to change that much quicker. And it did come out from the lean world. It's now been adopted in ability in the worlds that we're in today, but it does date back from the, the 40s and the 50s, this is a picture of a gentleman from Toyota. And we all know how Toyota grew a much more efficient organization and delivered in the 70s in their production lines of the, the cars that they did. And that all resulted from a link from a supermarket seeing how they were only stocking their inventory based on the demand rather than what was coming from suppliers. So it was the ability to look at cutting that waste out and actually having visual signs what needs to take place now to allow us to move through the process, move to keep the flow going through the organization. But how can a digital Kanban board, that's great, that's a, you know, dates back to that, that era in the manufacturing world, how can a digital Kanban board help us? Well, it's helping in the same way, self-organizing teams, limit work in progress, that multitasking element, let's focus on how many things we're trying to work on at this current time. Let's build some transparency in, so it's not just relying on an individual to tell us, I'm all right, I can cope with this. As a collective group, we can work out whether we can deliver what we've committed to. And this comes back to that sprint that we were talking about earlier, and the sprint in terms of the whole idea from divide and conquer, agreeing a set of work that can be delivered in a finite amount of time. Therefore, allowing us to move to customer satisfaction and empowering the teams. So the key, the key in many respects therefore is how does it do that? How does that allow us to do that? Well when we look at the Kanban board and we talk, let's talk about to-do list, a nice clear visual indication of what needs to take place. Visualization, we talk about studies into the mind, accelerates learning the ability to prioritize. We can all relate to that. When you sit back and actually visualize something, you feel much calmer. You know how to deal with something. And really, that's just the brain we all have. So if we can visualize work and I start to limit the work in progress, focus on the right things, one, as individuals with karma, but more importantly, what's going to go through the organization will be delivered that much more efficiently. So we're really looking to concentrate on actionable, context-sensitive flow as a team. And limiting the work in progress helps complete what we start and therefore make sure we stop starting and start finishing, which is the essence 
again for effective delivery through the organization. The Kanban board also, remembering the manifesto that we, we, we touched on at the beginning, allows us to self-organize and the key to high performance teams. Individuals, this is a development environment from project, but looking at a Kanban board, if you look at a piece of work as a team, you can discuss why isn't this, why isn't this started rather than highlighting to the individual. It's clear what's sitting in a plan column and what is needing to be moved into a work column. Remembering a Kanban board in essence has three columns. We can add more. We have a planned work, we have work in progress, and we have a done column. So we can truly see as a team what we're working on. So it allows as a, as a group to make sure that behavior is clear. It also allows us through collaborative planning to reinforce efficient project behavior. Getting people part of a project, and we've all been on such projects. When you feel part of a team, whether it's outside work as a sports team or whether it's part of a project team, and you take something on and you commit to it and you deliver it, it reinforces good behavior. But also if we can do that in such a way that we as a team can recognize what people are working on, that too will allow us to be that much more successful. There's something called the Ziegenick effect that comes into play as well. I don't propose to spend very much, much time on this at all, but the idea is the psychological tendency is to remember uncompleted ones rather than completed tasks. And suddenly we have a visual impact to allow us to start dragging columns into, uh, dragging cards into columns, dragging cards into the last column representing finishing a task. It reduces that cognitive uh, load and perceived stress. If we can clear the things out and therefore have a smaller amount of things that need to be done, it really will improve our, our work environment, but more importantly, what we start producing. But the transparency isn't just for the people of part of the project, it's also about the management. Remembering we talked earlier about non-linear management and linear management. All of us who are managers have constantly, with the amount of time, the studies by Gallup suggesting 85%, I would imagine it might be higher, spent by a lot of management is on asking for update meetings or writing reports. So there's a lot of information that we can build a key principle here is giving that transparency and allowing us to understand at any time where we are in terms of the workloads of the teams. This doesn't mean, I think it's a misnomer to believe that that would mean that there's no management at all. It allows the management to concentrate on the particular areas it can add value, which I'll touch on in a few moments time. And that is shaping behaviors, because if we're going to move towards certain projects, and I'm very careful with my words there, certain types of projects that we can adapt to such an approach, we really have to look about shaping the behaviors of individuals. As individuals, we've worked in a certain way, we're comfortable, none of us like change, but there are certain areas that if we start looking at what management really is and shaping behavior of teams to deliver something, then really it should be achievable. Because in this area, we're talking about role model leadership, instructions and core value, basically allowing us to behave, reinforce good behavior, positive feedback. I heard at an event at the International Project Management Association last week, somebody took this to perhaps an extreme, but there's a view that you shouldn't guide your children to some degree. Let your children fail at things. Let them experience that failure early on so therefore as they get stronger as they get older they get stronger there are obviously certain times you need to make it clear to somebody you shouldn't do that but there is a view that as individuals if you actually ignore the poor behavior concentrate on the good behavior then that will allow people to be more motivated less defensive and more secure and we all know as individuals in a project if we feel like that we generally deliver that much more. And this is where that social world that some of us are more comfortable with than others really allows it to lend itself. You know, some of us from a Facebook world very comfortable with knowing what our, our friends from distant past are doing over a weekend, but also recognizing and saying we like something. Well, that has a role to play now in business because if we're working in a disparate team and we're suddenly wanting to collaborate to allow ourselves to be that much more flexible, then suddenly we need to look at that behavior and we can make use of such approaches so people recognize that doing something, they're doing something well 
and again that would allow us to really reinforce that positive behavior. But at the center of this will be projects. So we talk about, and there's a lot of us, and lots of people very much are very excited about the lean and agile world. Is this the suddenly, is this the future, or is it a fad? Is this the future when no longer we'll run projects in the way we used to? Well, I'll come on to that. But first of all, how many projects are you running at this moment in time uh, within your organization? You know, up to 10 or over 100. So because really in many respects, a lot of the time what we think is a project what, what we sorry what we sometimes deliver as work isn't always thought of as a project so let's look, publish some of that information now as we, we, we're, we're getting it from you and I do do appreciate you taking the time to be part of these polls so about half the the audience has up to 10 projects but also 20% over a hundred projects but what we found working with 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 a number of organizations sometimes things are being delivered that aren't even considered a project because we talk about the traditional PM versus social PM, and this is what the, the, the subject of the last webinar was about. We talk from a traditional world, project manager, top of everything, right down to the sort of report gathering and a lot of control, and the social world being a much more Kanban world. So in many respects, an organization historically has thought about projects as being traditional Gantt and now recognizing their initiatives within their organization that can be and should be delivered in some form of project. Because a project can be anything. A project in many respects could be, we're going on holiday, what a lovely idea. We're going on holiday and we know we have certain things to achieve. We have a master plan ready to go on holiday, certain key things that need to be sorted out before we go. And then a list of to-dos to get those things done. A very simple project where we have a master plan and then we have an action planning, a Kanban board, it's a to-do list, bringing that plan to life. But we also have the need, and we still will always have that need, to have a role of a Gantt chart for a more complex projects, more look-ahead planning. So we're looking for a balanced portfolio in our organizations that marry those two worlds up. But there's an ability, if we get the balance right, to have some agility in those projects because we'll have a Gantt chart so far, and then we'll bring that to life with our Kanban board. The final question I'd like to, to ask you on that is, what is the average duration of the projects that you have within your organization? We talked about some of you have less than 10 projects, and some of you have uh, over 100 projects. I'd be interested as an audience what we have from that base. And the reason I mention that is generally the project complexity will mean a longer term project. We'll need the role of a Gantt chart. But a smaller type project will perhaps benefit from milestones, still critical and in a, in, and in a Gantt chart, but the milestones then fleshed out with just a list of to-dos. A list of to-dos that mean let's get that data done. So here we're talking about six to 18 month projects is the, is the majority, but we still have some short burst activity. And that short burst activity still needs to be managed. So that is the end of those poll questions. And just to sort of move, so what we're talking about is what was termed as an agile Gantt. So suddenly a Gantt, depending on the type of project, will need and have a role to play. Because I think there's sometimes a, a myth or a misnomer that an agile project doesn't need any of that control. Of course it has deliverables. Of course it has a timeline. But in that period where you're fleshing out that next deliverable, you have the agility and you can make use of things and technologies such as Kanban boards to allow that to happen. So this is just a very simple example or an example of a, a Gantt chart uh, where we have in the Gantt chart, we highlight a particular activity, then we have on that activity on the right hand side a list of things to do, a to-do list, so we can suddenly look at those and bring in that project to life in a Kanban board. This Kanban board has more than just planned, worked on and done. It has some additional columns. Remember when we can put any in. But we suddenly as a, have the opportunity to move those, those cards around, depending as a team, what we suddenly need to prioritize. The ability to do that allows us to bring the Gantt chart to life, remembering the Gantt still controls the milestones of the associated delivery. 
we have the ability on the right hand side as well to have a communication, a collaboration across those pieces of work. Remembering these individuals could be anywhere in the same organization or a different organization, a different continent, a different city, whatever it might be. But the focus is on getting the bits of work delivered. So the Gantt versus Kanban, they coexist and they're a big part to bring to life the lean and agile world, depending on the type of project that we have. So what kind of collaboration tool should you choose? It really does depend on what you're trying to do from day one. It can be a very simple solution, a to-do type solution, something Project Place has as a free downloadable, a to-do. But it could be a much more enriching environment, a project virtual project room allowing the documents as well as the communication and the planning to coexist. I'd just like to take a few moments now before we, we have a look at some of the questions and I wrap up, just to make sure those of you on the call know who Project Place are as an organization. Project Place are now part of Plan View. And this is very relevant because what we're talking about is one organization with two brands. But it's really bringing together the two worlds that we talked about. The need, and there very much is that need for project portfolio management, a waterfall type project, but also the ability to coexist with those collaboration environments of projects that bring the ability to teams to collaborate with each other in a much more agile world. Because projects vary in what they're doing within an organization. And that will be a key part as we move forward. The project based part is something that's been around since 1998. It's pure cloud, secure environment to allow people to set up virtual project rooms and then work with each other in the confidence and the knowledge it's secure, but collaborate at a document level, communication, and also planning. So it's about those three areas working with each other. Obviously, we've been concentrating today on the project management and execution and some of the team and task collaboration. The relevance of such approach is across verticals. And some of these organizations will be much more traditional in their projects and some of them adopting a much more agile approach. But the importance is there's a mixture of those projects' environments. So it's about delivering better and faster for those correct type projects, taking the benefits of messages learned in that production manufacturing world of concentrating on the activities that add value to the customer and minimizing the waste, but also at the same point learning from the software development about the agility of allowing us to work on shorter periods of time to get things out so the customer can react. So let's deliver better and faster. What do you believe is a key foundation of collaboration? Well, personally, I think, as the word suggests, it is working with each other and confidence and people taking on a responsibility when they're given uh, an act, either given an activity or they take an activity on themselves and collaborating with a goal. And I think this is why when we talked uh, from a personal point of view at certain events, sometimes it gets lost when we talk about Lean and Agile, there still is a goal. And that's why when people are collaborating as a team over a fixed period of 30 days to get something out, it really brings home the need for people to work effectively with each other and collaborate. And it does a Kanban board tend to increase the number of small tasks done first because people get satisfaction from completing tasks on a board, meaning that the larger tasks get left behind. Well, in, in some respects, that's, that's a possible. Uh, I suppose that is a possible. But remember, what we're talking about is, is transparency if we're going to adopt such approach. Uh, from a personal point of view, I was a software developer, uh, oh gosh, uh, 25 years ago. And you would be given a, a, a number of pieces of work to work on, and invariably, no one knew what you were doing day to day within that or transparency, so you could hide, you could book things in different ways. And so suddenly, yeah, human nature does mean that people want to tick off things to get them done. We all like to tick things off. But it's done in a transparent way, so we know what's in the, excuse me, in the work in progress. But more importantly, we as a team should be agreeing what we take on. So what if we're going to learn from some of the software development world, we'll take on a big piece of work and a number of small pieces so we can make sure the idea is get something delivered at a certain set of time. So just ticking things off that aren't adding the value is not taking the principle from the lean side uh, correctly.
traditional organization and large engineering projects, what are the current barriers to collaboration? I think in many respects, collaboration, or if I open that up, the, the adoption of some of the things that we've talked about in general, Lean, Agile, and Kanban, it is challenging what we're used to, and, and, and getting the balance right between an organization still needing to have clear deliverables, to know exactly the capacity they have as resources, and they know how much effort is taken, and are they on budget, and those are still there, and I think there's a perception that if we adopt too much collaboration as an approach, then we're going to lose sight of that. And I think that's where some of us perhaps have missed the opportunity to recognize we still have milestones. We still have the ability to track the success of a project, but we're allowing that project, a certain type of project, to be delivered in a much more effective way of collaborating with the members of the project and, and giving them to self-organize and deliver the work that much more effectively. Is there a simple way to introduce a Kanban board to an organization with standard MS Office tools? We are at the very early stages at present. Uh, at present. Thanks, uh, Gary. Now, a simple way to introduce a Kanban board, yeah, I, I think mentally is the first thing. Uh, and I think those of us who have been involved in projects, we've all produced plans to a certain level. Uh, if you remember that slide, I talked about uh, simple projects to complex projects. We might have a very detailed Gantt chart or a relatively lighter Gantt chart, but defining the, the, the relationships between some key activities. Now, once we have that plan, people who are looking to deliver that plan might go off and produce on either a notebook, their own paper notebook, or an Excel spreadsheet, things that need to be done to get that to be achieved. So really, the first thing to understand as a Kanban board is that list. It's that to-do list. And now suddenly, rather than having it secretly in somebody's book or in an Excel spreadsheet detached from the Gantt chart, we're now adding them directly to the Gantt chart. So the first point of view, I suppose, is, is to start to consider taking the plan to a certain level, which we will need, depending on the type of project, and then really saying, OK, how are we going to get this achieved as a team? And then using the Kanban board to really initially allow us having to do this. But suddenly, once we move from that and we collaborate as a team, because suddenly I'm looking inside somebody's notebook and I can see I've done that piece of work in a similar project before. We don't always know what people's experiences are. We start dragging out the real value of the team and start getting things done. So I would suggest the first thing to consider when looking at Kanban is really adopting a most simple level, something that a lot of us have been doing in spreadsheets and at that level uh, and bringing that directly into the project. How important is co-location? Now, that's a, that, that, that is an interesting one. Co-location, if, if I'm taking what I, what I understand from that question, so obviously I haven't got the individual necessarily fleshing it out, the importance of working together cannot be underestimated. I think the, the siloed approach really has seen to be issues in a number of ways. So co-location, there will be the very fact that we'll have projects that involve different organizations or different departments within the same organization on different physical sites means we will have those different locations. It's just part of the world that we're in. We can no longer remove ourselves back to being in a single place. So the importance of co-location, if I've understood it, is, is just part of the world we're in. So when we're looking at do structured people or unstructured people prefer Kanban boards more, uh, I, I think the first point is a lot of time it's fear. Some people will, 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 will be worried about the unknown, what it means. I think the structured people will see it as potential carnage because people will just pick up what they want when they want, which is, I think, a point mentioned in one of those earlier questions. But the whole aspect of this is once that settles down and people can see the added value, it allows control to still be wrapped around the project but not to strangle the project. So allow us to have control at the right level for the management, but give us the flexibility on a day-to-day -day basis for a team to work effectively to bring that project to life. So I think the key here is balance. As I said, I've been to a number of events over the past year, and sometimes I think we're all felt that it was one or one, either or, and it's not. It's a combination that's relevant to the project. And if we get that balance right, everybody will benefit from it. There's a question here, uh, I'm reading on the fly, this is dangerous. Um, I come from an IT infrastructure background and I'm very new to Agile and also a bit skeptical of how this would work in my field. 
How do you reconcile the need for Agile when documentation is important to establish baselines and how do you manage change? I think that, that, that's what I was mentioning a few moments ago. This isn't necessitating the need to suddenly not have documentation because I think that there is a need for a scoping environment in any project, which is why uh, organizations like Project Place will advocate project rooms, virtual project rooms, which will have documents inside them that will manage the project in terms of the content of the project. I think that this is about the detail of such documentation during the course. Is it looking to cover the whole project or certain phases of the project? But the right amount of uh, documentation will always be essential because you do need to record what the change is. But I think this is bringing such documentation to visually see it and, and, and have what we have from a software development background, rapid product development, to allow us to have that and to bring such requirements to life. But it doesn't mean requirements don't need to be recorded because in m many ways from a software background, product background, we're pulling things out of a product catalog that will have a level of detail in them and bringing those to life. So again, I, I personally believe it's a misnomer to feel that an Agile project would not have any documentation as part of it and any change management. I think, again, it would really be relevant or the, the, the right amount of documentation uh, would depend on the project itself. Um, just looking for... Um, there is a question here from a technical point. Is there likely to be an integration with Microsoft SharePoint? In such worlds as Project Place, yeah, you have worlds where things are already in place. Uh, there are some environments where there is a greenfield site, but in course you might need to bring information in. And from our experience, yes, you might have a backbone for an internal point of view of using something like SharePoint, but when you're involving externals to stop having to bring them through firewalls, you have the ability to produce a virtual project room, but then bring certain information from the SharePoint environment if need be. The, the, the role of APIs, as we all know, will allow integration in different levels to, to be achieved. Where can we find a Kanban board? I think it would make such a big difference in our team organization. Well, a Kanban board, as I said, is nothing particular to, to project plates. In many respects, with some organizations would have a Kanban on, the, on, the, on a wall in a white. You, know, you could produce one in terms of a form of a, literally a whiteboard or, or within a project room. Obviously, digital Kanban board is different uh, because that suddenly facilitates us having people into that project room wherever they may be. Uh, so if you Google Kanban, you, you will find plenty of uh, literature on it. We, we can provide uh, uh, reports on Kanban against Gantt, which we more than happily do. So obviously I'd love the opportunity to show you how a Kanban board in a project place environment works uh, in terms of digital board. But also on our website, we do have something called To Do, uh, which is a freely downloadable Kanban for you allowed to play with and explore. Can Agile and visual card method be used for all projects? Further, can it be used on programs? Is stakeholder involvement key with some companies just as uh, just are unable to commit time from start to finish of a project? The waterfall only asks for initial and periodic involvement, yet the stakeholders cannot commit this. Low level investment of time from some key stakeholders. I think the essence of there is it is a combination and I think that's obviously from from where we're sitting in project place with being part of the plan view world reflects that and the studies out there and recent reports by uh, Gartner and Forrest really reflect where that market is going there is a balance of those two so I, I, when we talk about stakeholder involvement there still is the percolation of information from a project room into the project manager office for that, that for that matter because we still need to make sure we have the capacity within the organization to, to service the various project rooms that we have. Uh, but within the execution of those project rooms, we can allow people to collaborate and, and, and effectively work each other on, on their Kanban boards. And we might just act, uh, actually allocate one activity, one card to a stakeholder. So their, their interaction with the project is, is relatively modest, but they know what's going on. Or we could just publish information from within the project room to an associated URL. So the essence is the two. Can't say it anymore. It's really important to understand it's a balance depending on the project you're delivering. But there is a need for control, reporting up to senior management, but then also executing the project. Bring the project to life. So don't just leave it in the plan itself.
Uh, what's the next step to be aware of when changing an organization from traditional to agile Kanban project methods? I, I think, the, as I said, there's a balance. Uh, personally, I think as we go forward, there'll be some organizations will take more and more, uh, more and more project will be delivered in such a way. I think the biggest thing is the cultural aspect, is the, the, the onboarding and, uh, dare I say, a younger generation just the way they do. Um, I have uh, a young family myself and I don't think they'd have any issue of taking an approach to such projects, but some of us who have been delivering and successfully delivering projects might have a, a little bit more skepticism. So I think what we found when we work with organization is have a, a project alongside a collaborative project just to make sure people recognize what this approach can do for them as an organization and then start rolling into specific projects. What is typically documented on a Kanban card? The what, the who, the when, anything else is best practice? Well, a Kanban card, a Kanban card in, 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 invariably will be a, a who, obviously. Uh, there will be a piece of work, uh, there will be a who. Uh, the who can either be still a little bit more like the traditional, be uh, allocated to somebody by a project manager, or it could be somebody self-organizing themselves to pick up a piece of work that they know. Uh, we, we, we can set an estimate for that, uh, a timeline for when that card will be done, so we can have a visual impact when it's gone past that timeline. We can associate documentation to the, the card, so suddenly we have a card, get on with this piece of work, by the way, the, the question I mentioned earlier, Here's a rough spec of what we need to produce, and we can have that document through a, 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 rev, a, a version managed, so we can track the changes depending on what we, we, we do with the development itself. But also, and the real, real opportunity here is any card will have a communication line across it. So rather than just being a static information, we suddenly have dialogue uh, between people working on the project. And on that card, the only people who would see it are the people who are working on it. So it really suddenly is a, a combination, but it's, as I said, it will, will allow you to have that bit of information, but also particularly the communication.